So hi everyone, I am very, very happy to have with me today Dr. Sharanu T.S. He's a proud Amazonian and he secured an amazing rank 9 in NEET PG 2024. So proud of you and so happy for you, Sharanu. So tell, tell me about your emotions right now. Uh, I am feeling extremely happy about the result, ma'am. Initially, I can't believe that uh, I have achieved the single digit rank, ma'am. Uh, then yes, I exactly. checked again ma whether it is real or uh, any fake uh, fake document is circulating in the <laughs> media. Yes, right. initially, initially two three days I got fake uh, PDFs and uh, then I got uh, uh, message to know that it is fake circulating again and again. Then after right. I, checked, I came to know that it is uh, real itself. And then it turned out to be rank nine. No, that's that's yes. superb. It's it's an amazing yes, performance, uh, Sharanu, and it's something to be really proud of. So, yes, Sharanu, you have been a student with us from your pre-foundation years. We want to know your uh, strategy, right? The students who are listening to know to you would want to know uh, how did you use or what strategy were you using to reach this far? You know, uh, yes. were you reading notes? How did you concise? How did you revise? How did you do the MCQ practice? So we would want to know it all. Yes, initially I joined the pre-foundation course from then uh, initially I used to read textbook and I used to <coughs> feeling uh, bored uh, uh, in a short hour amount of time. Then yes. I, I, when I attended the classes, then I get uh, interested to read the textbook and video, the clinical correlation and also world posting, uh, you can go and uh, that correlation made me fell in love with the subject and that kept me go on, go on throughout this journey without any boring man. For this, uh, I made uh, my self-made notes, ma'am, which were uh, helpful to re revision, ma'am. Revision was the key to the success in this neat PG exam. Uh, your uh, hand, hand, handmade notes and concise notes uh, will make you to revise faster, and uh, more the more more you do revision, and uh, the, your results will be the finer. Right. And what about your MCQ practice and test practice? Because you know this paper was a lot application and a lot yes, of concepts were there, depth of knowledge yes. was there. So what yes, would you, when did you start practicing questions and grand tests and tests? Yes. Uh, I started practicing, actually questions I started uh, after, once I started uh, seriously after internship ma'am. Okay. I started okay. me, uh, doing MCQs after internship only and I gave my first uh, grand test in October ma'am, last October. Okay. Uh, uh, after uh, doing the grand test and also after doing QBank, the analysis uh, in uh, and analysis of the wrong question, I used to read them because the, those were the areas uh, which made you to learn new things and uh, possible to differentiate the nearly clinic, nearly close uh, differential diagnosis into different, which made uh, uh, me to secure this rank in the NEET PG because this year's NEET PG was also more a uh, clinical based exam and the options yes. were also similar looking the, the doing more questions from the Q bank will help you to differentiate the options and uh, reach the correct answer immediately right and you know when you were saying you were talking about the grand test practice and your mistakes were you making a wrong diary did you see the video solutions ah uh, yes ma'am yeah. Uh, after the reviewing, ma'am, reviewing the wrong questions, well, I used to do first, ma'am. Uh, during the reviewing, ma I used to see the attached uh, video tag, uh, okay. which helped me to re revisit the areas which I used to lack in the concepts or any new facts added. And I used to read them uh, any explanation, new explanation. If uh, such explanation is I feeling uh, which I feel relevant, I used to add to the notes, ma'am. Okay. And how did you concise your notes or how did you do your first revision, uh, Sharanu? Uh, uh, notes were the primary source itself. They were only okay. concise. I, uh, for the last day revision, I concised that for 20th book. Man. Okay. And, uh, you know, also uh, closer to the exam, you know, um, uh, you were giving the CBT. So tell me about your CBT experience and... Uh, especially, uh, you know, when the news of postponement came, how did you utilize that time? Uh, yes, initially, I have given CBT before postponement uh, the exam, which were scheduled on 23. Uh, then okay. I gave CBT, then I gained some confidence and I started revising for the last uh, sprint. Uh, 
actually i i prepared well for those uh, 10 or days man uh, at the last moment it got postponed that i got really depressed because uh, that last 10 days were uh, really hectic man then i was not uh, again ready to go to those uh, 10 days back once again man so i after postponement i took a break of about 10 days man then i started uh, preparing again right and again you started with your notes itself Yes, ma'am. I, once again, I read uh, superficially the highlighted areas, and then again uh, in a, in a one week stretch, I revised again the subject form so that uh, they should stay fresh in the mind and uh, the recall error should be minimum. Okay, and closer to the exam, uh, did we use DVT or did we, you know, sort of give more tests based on DVTs or grand tests? So, what was your strategy at that oh, time? Yeah. Nearer, nearer to the exam, I have not uh, attended uh, any GTs, ma'am. I will stick to the notes only. Notes only. Great, um, great. Okay, yes. now let's know, let's know from you about your, uh, you know, uh, exam day thing. So, which session did you give in the uh, paper? I, Morning or evening? Afternoon, afternoon session. Okay, the evening session. So, can you yes. give us some insight about your session? Like, what was the distribution of subjects? What, according to you, are, you know, the most important subjects? Uh, yes, something about uh, difficulty level, whether the questions yes. were one-liners or clinical, more insight into the paper. Yes, so compared to first paper, second paper, uh, I felt it was uh, very clinical and it was mm -hmm. not like one-liner fact-based question. It was a clinical uh, question. Uh, more of a OBG and surgery was heavily based on the mm -hmm. clinical images and uh, clinical scenarios. Mm -hmm which uh, by only studying one-liners you can't answer you have to understand the clinical scenario and application of that uh, is asked and options were also so close that uh, you have to you have to get the thorough knowledge to rule out that option yes yes you're right so that's why you needed the depth of content so that you are able yes. to rule out options and select the best one yes ma'am okay and uh, uh, what about uh, your uh, first and second year subjects you know uh, how would you, what was the weightage? Because as far as short subjects are concerned, I think uh, there was a lot of radio, psychiatry. The yes. short subjects had a significant weightage. Yes, because the pathology, for first and second, from the anatomy and pathology questions were not direct. They were correlated with the surgery or OBG. The clinical integration were done with the clinical subjects, ma'am, for that pathology. It was not exclusively pathology questions like a one-liner, not one, uh, okay. used to previously, like, like giving the slide and name the tumor. Like It was more of a clinical scenario based, ma'am. If a pathology particular gynec uh, tumor has to be asked, then it will be given like a gynec, a gynecological history patient come, patient coming with a so and so complaint. And then... Uh, and then giving the pathological op options from the it, uh, mainly integrated the preclinical subjects with Absolutely. the clinical subjects. Right, that's right. And how many questions did you attempt? I attempted 197 questions. 197. And what do you think would be the approximate number of correct questions? I after uh, some uh, recalls, ma'am, I found around 180 to 1, 180 to 182, ma'am. I got. Okay. And, uh, you know, what were your ranks in the CBTs? Do you think that CBT, the level of this... Ah, uh, actually, CBTs uh, were uh, one level ahead of this exam, ma'am. Because that made uh, this, I uh, initially after giving uh, second session, I felt like it was like easy, easy because I was acclimatized to that level of uh, CBTs yes. and other tough or GTs, ma'am. So yes. I felt that it was okay, like it was doable. Then after uh, seeing the analysis of the expert, ma'am, then I came to know that like uh, compared to the last year, this year's need PG was tougher like that. But I, um, after giving the CBT, I felt like it is also like the CBT only. Ma and now I want to ask you, uh, Sharanu, that what would be your advice to someone who's going to appear for the exam next year, let's say even for November INICT and next year need PG. So yes. now you've seen the trend of the questions what would yes. be your key advices to these students? Um, uh, more than one liners, clinical correlation uh, is needed. No? So mm -hmm. uh, solve more questions on the case case related uh, MCQ, not only fact based MCQ. No? It is a yes. main game changer. And INACT also asks uh, more of a concept based questions more rather than the 
uh, one liners no? now neat pg also is shifting its trend towards the clinical based exam so rather than uh, mugging up uh, clinical uh, based uh, videos and clinical based qbank is uh, helpful no? and you know also what would you say when when i would say that you know sometimes uh, students would uh, want to do only pyqs right uh, uh, what would you say about that no only pyq will help you to fetch around 100 uh, 100 to 120 questions only ma'am uh, but uh, yeah, above that uh, reaching the above that level the pyq related the areas and uh, some any new topics ma'am which uh, are potential to be asked and which the faculty will tell those need to be practiced and uh, mainly focus on your weak areas ma'am whether it is pyq or any any other areas whichever you are doing repeatedly mistake it will help you to achieve the uh achieve the desired option in the option by ruling out the other unnecessary options from the qbank will mainly improve your rank by ruling out the options from not it is not direct that, that it will uh, uh, give a hint that it is only a right answer it will uh, rule out the other uh, negative answers from. right and also lastly i would want to ask uh, sharanu that uh, you know when we are preparing um, at that time uh because this neat pg i have seen that a wide variety of questions is asked yes. right but uh, do you think there were atypical things or very unique things that were asked so uh, uh, the content has to be strong but still you know do you feel that it has to be at the same time focusing on high yielding things and not very unique <laughs> updates and all those things yes ma'am the the every paper will have that like rank uh, one around 100 to 120 will be like uh, from poiq or poit so and after that uh, the related the twisted topics the image with the clinical scenario will be added up and every exam will have around uh, 10 15 and out questions will be like uh, undoable means means uh, you have to rule out the options you have to read the clinical history again and again such questions uh, you may get or you may get it wrong Uh, those are not any differentiating initially your rank building around 160 questions 120 pyq pyt or pyq related and remaining 40 questions from the um, surrounding areas of the pyqs ma'am and uh, mm-hmm. those you should not focus on those uh, 15 odd areas which uh, most of them will get wrong the main uh, the the rank building question should be focused first and uh, if you if you can eliminate uh, one or two options then you can uh, take a guess uh, among the options ma'am right okay i think that is a fair uh, absolutely a fair approach because uh, we yes. need to know that content ka depth bhi chahiye width bhi chahiye and at yes. the same time you need your mcq skill so a good mix and match is uh, yes. you know is what we all need and yes. uh, definitely revision is the key the more number of times you revise uh, yes. you keep yes. concising your notes the better you get right Yes, so Shannu uh, is there any anything motivating that you want to say to people who are listening to you what kept you going uh, amidst the chaos ah uh, yes ma'am because uh, the this journey is itself a uh, long run ma'am and after uh, this postponement preponement and again postponement uh, will uh, may, the, there may be 100 reasons uh, to give up ma'am but uh, your the final destiny is to achieve that one day you have to work towards that one day and uh, that has to be the motivating and that has to be the force that keeps you moving and, uh, uh, and take your uh, teachers and parents as a motivation and that's all absolutely very nicely said charanu so it's so sweet of you and what branch do you want to pursue i want to pursue md general medicine or i am thinking of radiology now. okay so i am sure you will take your time and you will take a good decision because your branch is important Uh, so yes. you know thank you sharanu uh, from the entire dance team thank you for making us a part of your journey uh, yes, we all ma'am. wish a very bright future ahead for you and uh, we hope that you know you keep getting better and better and you keep having more and more success in life uh, so thank, thank you. you so much and it was an absolute pleasure to have you here today all the best for your future endeavors thank you ma'am thank you thank you